Hi, my name is Chuan Yan, and I will introduce our work, Flat Magic, improving flat colorization through AI-driven design for digital comic professionals. This is a work collaboration. This work is a collaboration with Yutan Gingo, Ray Hong from George Mason University, John Chun, Ethan Adar from University of Michigan, and Tian Yun from Pusan National University. The digitalized drawing technology has greatly improved the artist's work efficiency. However, their workload may still not easy as industry standards improved. For example, the rapidly growing webcomic has a much higher degree of colorization, which even bring greater workload than before. On the other hand, there are also many research works that try to automate the colorization stage and many of them show impressive results. However, few of those technologies have been widely used by professional artists. Therefore, to find out the reason behind, we interviewed five professionals who have published their work in commercial comic distribution platforms for more than three years. And we're aiming to understand their workflow, challenges in their work, general thoughts and expecting features on AI tools, and the key factors that affect them adopting AI automations. The interview results shows there is a common workflow, which include line drawing, flat colorization, shading, lighting, and spatial effects. Additional analysis in identified one spatial stage in this workflow, flatting, which shows several characteristics that particularly fit for AI-driven automation. We will discuss this reasoning behind in a few next slides. First of all, what is flatting? Flatting is a colorization stage where the artists create a set of mutual exclusive layers. And there exist the two industry requirements, consistency and completeness. Flat consistency means the desired color region are consistently correct. They should always neither contain mergeable regions nor spill out to their neighbor regions. Therefore, professionals need to find the and fix the falsely closed or falsely open lines before the bucket is filling, which need them to pay full attention. The flat completeness requires the flat result only contain mutual ex exclusive nor or no overlapping regions that cover the whole drawing space. Common failure case in, the, in this requirement are the dirty bits caused by anti-aliasing pixels or gaps under line drawings when use the native bucketing tools. And fixing those problems is usually tedious and time consuming. On the other side, participants also mentioned lack of control is one of the issues that keeps them from adopting the AI tools because the output of AI usually can't exactly match the professional's target. However, it is difficult or even impossible to adjust. Trying to fix those outputs will even need more efforts than they just colorize from scratch. It is also difficult for AI tools to find out the professional's idea, ideal work in their mind. The result will be highly personalized and there always exist multi-targets for each single output input. To sum up, we found that different from another colorization stage, flatting has just one ground truth for each line drawing. Meanwhile, it is also a bottleneck in the whole workflow since it's costly workload when using the general drawing tool. So any speed up on this stage can help professionals invest more resource into later stages that matters more to the overall product quality. Therefore, they are more open to let automated tools deal with this less creative stage. So we designed flat magic, given input line drawing, how to design an efficient flatting method? We have discussed that professionals usually face artifacts such as wrong flat region and dirty base by na naive, naive bucketing tools. So it is nature to build up the interface of flat magic around this bucketing interaction to let the user bucket freely and get a almost correct result. Because flatting is color agnostic, we build a neural network to simplify the input lines. The target of this simplification is created by extracting one pixel width boundary from the ideal flatting result. We call this procedure as a neural reline. Then we train the neural reline model based on a ground truth data set shared with us by a digital comic company. Then fill the simplified lines with different labels and post the processing it into the initial flatting result. The user interface is implemented as Adobe Photoshop plugin. They receive the result from the neural reline model 
and allow user to manually colorize it into the desired professional level result by our improved bucketing tool. To verify efficiency of our flat magic, we recruited 16 students who are majoring in digital comic and animation, then ask them to flat 12 image line drawings by their best practice and by the flat magic respectively. The flat time distribution results shows flat magic helped participants to significantly reduce their labor. And the outcomes quality measurements shows participants could achieve similar or even slightly better outcomes to the best practice by using our flat magic. So here are some interesting high level insights on our finding, which, can, which we call it intermediate representation. Most of the AI automation methods provide a full automation with no revisable checkpoints. While most professionals did not like this, which we call it over AI overscoping. In contrast, intermediate representation offer a modularized architecture and a representation so that make it possible for user to know where and how to make necessary corrections. So we reflect some possible decision points when considering the design of AI system. First of all, we need to understand the detail, detailed stage-by-stage -stage workflow for a professional's task. Then carefully evaluate the degree of AI usefulness and the user intention at each stage in the workflow. AI usefulness reflect how much work labor AI could cut down for the user. User intention mentions how much a user desires to let the particular step automated. When considering AI usefulness and the user intention as to different dimension, we can project all the AI automation methods onto the strategic space for considering how and if this tool may be adopted. The most promising case would be S1, where the AI is useful and its valuation is, po is positive. In S2, when the AI is useful, we may still have a situation where an individual either doesn't want or doesn't think they want the automation. This suggests that it is worth considering a better adoption strategy to convince a user to adopt. In S3, when the user may want something automated, but the AI is unable to meet the objective. Introducing a problematic AI will discourage adopting the current or even all other similar tools. This suggests us maybe finding a smaller intermediate representation that gives a more reasonable AI automation scope is needed. In S4, while this worst case may be a back to the drawing board situation, however, they might also could be the result of didn't correctly model the needs, didn't build up the right UI, or did not implement the algorithms well. After we decide the right AI automation scoping, we need to be careful of merging the AI-driven automation scope when build up the tool. Because merging multiple steps could break a user's mental model of the process. The user may not be able to identify how or why errors are occurring or how to correct for them. At the last, I want to thank all my collaborators and thank you for your listening. Feel free to reach me out if you have any questions.